My name is Donald Lawadney and I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. A lot of people take things for granted just because they can do it and a lot of people don't understand with a condition like, like mine. Uh, for me it's a struggle every single day doing anything. When my feet can touch the floor in the morning and I can make it to the bathroom, even now I'm, <laughs> I'm happy. When we first got married, it was just the size of just a hump on my shoulder. And after after 38 years, I have ne in my wildest dreams, I've never thought that it would get to be the size that the tumor is now. We've tried weighing it and it's about 35 pounds right now. My name is Ryan Osborne. I train as a head and neck surgeon in South Central Los Angeles managing the most complex cancer and trauma patients in the country. I've operated across the globe in first and third world countries. My experiences have taught me the value of flexible and innovative thinking, but I realized that our healthcare system doesn't always allow for that. So I started Osborne Head and Neck Institute, and I made it my mission to provide the best medical care for our patients. Together, we create a new standard in medicine. These are our stories. Don reached out to me after seeing me remove a tumor on the show called Take My Tumor on TLC. He thought that the tumor resembled what he was suffering from, and he was hoping that he could get a similar result. He sent me some photos of his tumor, and quite frankly, I had never seen a tumor that large on a person's back. And so, there were too many variables and I had to examine him in person. And then his response just uh, uh, made me very emotional and uh, started to cry. So it was, it was tough. I really get a better understanding of, was this something that I could handle? We're headed to Denver, Colorado, and that is our layover and then we're headed to Winnipeg, Canada. When I got off the plane in Winnipeg, I found out that Don and his wife were waiting for me. They came all the way down there to surprise me at the airport. The plan was to get my rental car, check into my hotel, and then head out to Donald's house for dinner. Let me start by saying, I do not like to be cold. Anyone who knows me well knows I get cold easily and I am not happy with anything below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So why am I here, you may ask? Well, it's because I told Donald I was coming this year and it just so happened that this is when it worked out in my schedule. That's what there was, you know. Yeah, the country music. The reason why Dr. Osborne is here is... I really enjoyed having dinner with Donald and his family. I was able to feel a really strong family bond. Don's wife, Tracy, is such a supportive spouse. A tumor of this size doesn't just affect Donald. It also robs his wife and family is they have to adjust their lives and keep recharting their futures based on how this tumor restricts Donald's ability from being fully present. Growing up has been very, very uh, tough. I used to get teased in school with my condition. Uh, when I was in high school, 
one of the favorite slogans for me. They used to call me Bubble Neck because <laughs> I used to have uh, some tumor on my neck that was operated on. The worst people are actually adults making comments. My relation to Donald is that uh, he's my husband and we've been married for 38 years. He has a great sense of humor. He is uh, one of the strongest men I know, um, having carried what he carries every day. He is loving. He adores his family. And he is, if somebody needs help, he's always there for them. In my early 20s, I did go for uh, genetic counseling. And at that point, I was told that I, there was at least a 50% chance passing this on. It was hard for him because at what point in time do you tell someone you're dating that you have this and that it means that you won't have your own biological children? So it was a decision that I knew the person that I would be with would have to be very understanding that uh, if we were to have children, that it would probably be an adoption issue. So what I'm going to do is I want to take a look at you. Okay. And I just want to get an idea of your the anatomy from the front. So I'm going to bring you in here a little bit. I just want to see what you can do. Can you take this left arm mm -hmm. and raise it above your head? As high as you can go? Yeah. Otherwise Are you feeling pain when you get there? Is there pain? A little that? bit on the right-hand side, yeah. Okay, let's go to the, the right side. That's so all I can do. That's all you can do there. Yeah. Okay, good. How is that? Is that comfortable? The strains in the, in the back of my neck. Okay. As I was looking at Don and examining him, the only thing that was going through in my mind was how are we going to intubate him? Like, how are we going to get an airway safely? This is going to be a nightmare. Does this hurt? No. Can you swallow? I don't even feel the bottom of your Adam's apple. His neck, uh, it's, it's, it's short. Uh, the tumor is attaching on his upper chest. He doesn't have great range of motion. This is going to be impossible to perform a tracheostomy on. So a tracheostomy, while that might be something that people talk about, mm -hmm. would be exquisitely difficult to do on you uh, because your collarbone is here we would not really be able to get to your tracheus easily. Uh, and you don't have good extension, so that would be hard. So in my mind, that is probably off the table as an option. If we don't get this tube in orally and do it without paralyzing him, we could lose him on the table. Ideally, we don't want to have just one way to get that airway. <laughs> and we typically rely upon a surgical airway being able to cut down into the the airway if necessary. I have no idea how we're going to take this off safely. Yeah, you, you would be considered a nightmare for them. And I completely understand when he said he was told it's impossible. This looks impossible, but naturally everything seems impossible until it's done, right? So what I really was coming to the conclusion is I'm going to need to build a team. Oh, it's filling up from somewhere else. So here, these veins are all becoming engorged. This whole thing is getting engorged. Chimmer? Yes. And the problem with it is that the blood, a lot of the things that we rely upon to stop bleeding, they don't work. Do you see that wave effect there? When I just tap here, it just ripples. Donald and Tracy are living day to day with a future that doesn't look very bright. The tumor is just out of control, and I honestly have no idea how he's gone on for so long. No idea. I don't see any areas where you're breaking down, which is good. I see you had one on a couple I, yeah, spots. Yeah, I actually... You must yeah, have banged I almost it. went sepsis and stuff. I almost died a couple of years ago. It became infected. Yeah. And so the area that we would want to get to is behind these bones. Mm -hmm. Is not neck, back, shoulder, or chest, mm -hmm. but it's all of them. This feeding from multiple 
sources. It's yeah. not one scared. Um, I don't blame him. I'm just taking it all in because um, I need to think this thing through. Um, There's holes, there's three holes here. Do some some talking amongst yourselves and really think about that and yeah. and, and come to grips with it. Wow. Um, yeah. You know, um, <laughs> there's nothing to accept. Do you understand? That? Yeah. yeah. That's sure. easy to sort yeah. of move forward with. Yeah. Um, I look at it like... Generally sleep right on my tummy. Yeah. Uh, he can lay like on I can, tummy. as a rule, I can lay on my... I can turn my head. Yeah, it's yeah. more the pressure on his neck. And, you know, it's, 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 it's just my neck, right? Because I'm thinking if we can construct a special apparatus. <laughs> now, I don't know a whole lot about women, but you clearly have a good one. <laughs> um, and that's clear to me right here. The craziest looking spine I've seen in a long time, and it has wrists, but I've yeah. also watched you bending and doing things. Yeah that no matter what it looks like functionally it seems to be working it's like one of those cars where you're like i do see there's a pathway yeah um it, it's got risk if you have a car accident or a medical emergency and yeah. you started bleeding from that thing they're not going to be able to stop it no, no. There's no way. Well, they wouldn't even know. risk every day you walk yeah. out this door. Yeah. Well, I've been told I should be a quadriplegic. It's been harder on him, as hard as it is for me to see him suffer and deal with it. Um, he makes it easy for the rest of us because most people don't realize what he goes through day to day. It's actually robbing me of being able to do so many more things that I used to do without even thinking about it. I need help getting dressed, showering. With the tumor, it's very hard for him to clean it. I can't walk for long distances. Sometimes he needs help getting up and down, whether it's getting in or out of bed, sometimes he needs help. Over the years, I have not been able to do things with our children as they were growing up. It's tough because it's things that I would still still like to do. My son and, uh, and his wife, they're gonna be having a child. I want to be able to to be around, to be able to do things with our grandchild. A plastic surgeon attempted to do some surgery and according to the MRIs that they did, uh, just presented itself as fatty tissue. When they started to do the surgery, I guess they didn't realize that it was more vascular than it was fatty tissue. I bled like crazy the plastic surgeon just was uh, he was actually was freaking out and he actually had to stop i was told they would have needed about 30 units of blood and he had a very hard time stopping it after the surgery the anesthesiologist that came to see me and he told me that he was very worried because he had a problem with the intubation process. He told me that I was about 10 seconds away from getting a tracheotomy because he couldn't get the device in. A neurosurgeon told me I had, there was a 90% chance of dying from surgery. You know, if you were to tell me today there's a 90% chance of dying from surgery like I had heard before, well then I'd say, thank you very much for coming. It was a pleasure meeting you. And it would be done. Uh, I think I've even always said to you, like, even if, if there was like a 50% chance, I mean, I've always said, you know, I don't know how, how much longer I can go like this because it's such a struggle. It's a 50-50. Yeah. I think there's a 50% chance that this goes sure. perfect. Yeah. And a 50% chance that it goes less than perfect. Yeah. Okay. Today, like that's where I think we are yeah. right now. Um, I think if we fast forward 10 more years, I think um, that percentage is going to drop. To there's going to be 
an eighty percent chance that this goes terrible. Right. Yeah. Tumor. If you were yeah. intended to live to be ninety years old, yeah. Um, I think life, as we call it, in a functional standpoint, is going to end a lot shorter than that. You're not going. You're not going to live to your ninety. You're yeah. going to exist. Thinking about how long can I stand? How long can I walk? But I think you have to really pray about it and really examine yeah. that because um, you've probably been afraid a lot of times in your life about different things. Yeah. <laughs> it would be amazing um, if we could get you back to doing the things that mm -hmm. you two were doing before. For a, a, a doctor from Los Angeles to come all this way just to hear a yes or a no answer, it, it just... I, I'm I'm just blown away by it, and I'm just incredibly grateful and incredibly thankful that uh, he was willing to do that for me. I'm 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 optimistic. Yeah. That um, we can figure this out. Yeah. For him to be able to participate more in life instead of having to sit back and watch it, like it would just be amazing for him. It would be a. a complete life life change for me it would be a lot easier for us to just shake hands and separate yeah, yeah. it would haunt me mm -hmm. if there was a team that was ready to take this case on i would happily stand down and walk away but i didn't see anybody knocking on don's door i didn't see or hear of anybody who wanted to take this case on so essentially what I'm saying is I'm, I'm willing to, to, to keep going. And what I saw was a man who looked, in my opinion, to have a lot of good years ahead of him. If he could just get this thing off his back. I'm sly. I'm Sylvester Sly. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's it. If we can get it off, if we can get it off, the impact here it's indescribable.